The Windows Firewall comes standard in 2008 Windows 7 and Vista. It provides a means of protecting and controlling access to clients and servers and may be configured with multiple interfaces. Before we get into configuring the Windows Firewall, or any other firewall for that matter, we need to cover what I like to call the three Ps. The three Ps are packets, protocols, and ports. A packet is a logical container representing the flow of data. A protocol is a language and set of rules that network devices operate by, and a port is a numerical designation representing a particular protocol. Functionally, Windows Firewall accepts or rejects network packets according to connection rules, ports, protocols, and IPSEC security associations that are both inbound and outbound stored within its database. Some may ask, what is a packet? A packet, or a datagram, is a logical representation of a physical phenomena. It forms a unit of containment whereby data can be examined, routed, and filtered in regards to its destination, source, and content. The following diagram represents a datagram packet on a network. The following diagram represents a datagram or packet. A packet's information is organized into sections or categories known as fields. These fields hold different kinds of information, such as at layer 2, the source and destination MAC address, or at layer 3, the source and destination IP address, the time to live, the amount of time the packet will exist in the network until it's taken off the network, a header or checksum that's calculated to determine if there was an error during transit, as well as flags and fragment offset, the link, um, there's you know, a payload, options, all these different types of field data are in the packet or the datagram. Now, packets don't really look like this, they're just, you know, oscillating uh, light pulses if it's fiber, or patterns of electrons flowing through a wire that vary in amplitude and, and you know, frequency and modulate, um, but this is how we represent it. Uh, you know, this is how, uh, you know, we understand it, or how we, you know, logically try to look at or understand a packet. Once again, the diagram is not a real packet but it visually represents the flow of electrons or photons that physically transmit data on a network. To our naked eyes, we are only speaking of variations in amplitude and frequency, such as what would be visible on an oscilloscope. Not very intelligible to us, but very intelligible and useful to a computer. Data transmitted on a network is really just a flow of electrons, such as Category 6 or 5E through copper wire, or photons through fiber, and RF if it's wireless. These modulate in amplitude and frequency. These modulations are governed by the limitations of the media on which these particles travel. For example, electrons attenuate, that is, they are absorbed after a period of time into the conductors that carry them. If it were, say, Category 6 or 5E and those electrons were traveling on copper wire, there's a range limitation of about 100 meters, and after that they tend to attenuate or be absorbed into the medium, and you have to amplify the signal and resend it. A certain amount of the flow of particles converts to entropy or waste heat in a closed system. Other sources may interfere with transmitted data as well, such as electromagnetic interference or EMI from power lines and lights, RF from cell phones and transmitters, and damaged connections and equipment. To handle these errors, fields in each packet hold a CRC, or cyclical redundancy check value, that is calculated by an algorithm before they are sent. When these packets arrive at their destination, another checksum is calculated. If it matches the CRC field data from the source, the packet is good. If it doesn't, the packet is bad and is resent. This is just one of the ways the field data is used in each packet or datagram, and we can configure IP tables to make use of this. When multiple devices transmit messages on a network simultaneously, various protocols must be followed and applied to packets on that network. For instance, carrier sense of multiple access and collision detection governs collisions. When multiple devices transmit simultaneously on the same medium, on a cabled network, CSMACA, or Carrier Sense of Multiple Access and Collision Avoidance, does the same on a wireless network. At Layer 3 of the Open Systems Interconnect model, routers route packets to different subnets based on their field data using either static routes or dynamic routing protocols, such as Routing Information Protocol and Open Shortest Path First. At Layer 2, switches create connections between nodes and addresses and their MAC tables by configuring their application-specific integrated circuits. In this way, they can create full duplex connections between multiple MAC addresses plugged into any given switch. All of these services rely on field data transmitted with each packet. The flow of data, known as traffic, is governed by these standard protocols that bind to specific ports. Each port is represented by a number and can be filtered by opening or closing these ports to accept or reject packets whose field data match that port. This is how we configure and use IP tables, or any other firewall for that matter. There are many standard and commonly used transmission control protocol and user datagram protocol ports. Here are just a few of them. If you want a particular service to be offered by your server, you need to open the port so that the server can serve at that service to clients on the network. And this depends on whether you want to let the traffic in, 
incoming or input or a let it out, outcoming or output, or to forward it through a router to another subnet or network destination. Some of these ports and protocols include FTP, which would be 21 and 20, Secure Shell, 22, Telnet, 23, Web 80, and then Secure Web would be 443, SSL, Secure Sockets Layer, DNS 53, DHCP 67 and 68, Samba and NetBIOS 137 to 139, Active Directory 445, SMTP mailout would be 25, POP 3, 110, IMAP 143, VPN 1723, Kerberos 88 when you deal with Active Directory replication, and Simple Network Management Protocol 161 and 162. In addition to this, there are other protocols such as ICMP, um, Internet Control Management Protocol, which would be things like Diagnostics and the Ping Command. To configure IP tables or any other firewall, we must know the ports required for a particular service and open those ports while closing other ports that are not being used. As a typical firewall, the Windows Firewall controls the ports on a network interface where my packets can enter, pass through, or exit. Ports can be opened or closed for each service or kind of traffic one wishes to allow. Other ports are closed for traffic one wishes to deny. This concludes our introduction to the three Ps. Now we can move on to the actual implementation of the amazing Windows Firewall.